Good day to all of you once again, fellow Semites. Welcome back to our devotional series on the Gospel of Mark. Today we'll be looking at Mark chapter 9, verse 14 and 29 for our sharing. Please turn your Bible to Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to 29. times we have faith in God, but the reality is that not many of us like to deal with or talk about our unbelief. That's right, you never hear me wrongly. We never like to deal with our unbelief. So today, allow the Word of God to challenge us and strengthen us in our faith as a follower of Jesus Christ. This passage tells us that the disciples of Jesus were having an argument with the teachers of the law during that time. And when Jesus appeared, all the attention was turned to him. Now, a conversation then took place, and the father told Jesus that his son was traumatized by an impure spirit, and his disciples couldn't do anything about it. And of course, Jesus then went on to perform a very powerful miracle and drove out the impure spirit out of the boy. Now, I'd like to share with you two observations from this passage. In verse 22, it tells us that the father came before Jesus and said that, you know, Jesus, if you can do anything for me, for my son, please take pity on us and help us. Now, of course, many of us know the classic reply of Jesus in this passage. If you can, Jesus was dumbfounded, so to speak, but yet he replied, everything is possible for one who believes. Brothers and sisters, you know, it continued to tell us that after hearing Jesus' reply, the father went hysterical. You know, other versions of the Bible tells us that the father was weeping and wailing and calling out to Jesus. In verse 24, the father cried out to Jesus. He said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Brothers and sisters, first observation from this passage is that we need God's help to overcome our unbelief. After driving out the impure spirit, Jesus and his disciples went back home and his disciples came to him privately and asked him, said, Teacher, why? Why we couldn't drive out the impure spirit? Now, of course, Jesus classically tell them, now this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Second observation, from this passage is this. We need to pray and fast to experience God's miracle in our life. As for our application today, I want all of us to know that you and I must learn to deal with our unbelief openly and humbly. It takes spiritual courage for us to admit our weakness, to admit our shortcoming. It takes boldness to acknowledge our unbelief. 
Many a times it is easy to say that we believe and even live out our faith. For example, we give our offerings to God, to the church, when we have a stable income. But it is another thing when we realize that we might be laid off or we are about to lose our income or even some of our businesses are not profitable. Do you still give to the church faithfully? The root of our unbelief may come from our own selfishness, our fear. In the case of the father who felt hopeless and fearful about the condition of his son, you know, our carnal and human responses, they say that I, I may not have enough money for my own, or I don't have food on my table, or our over dependent on human intellectual and life experiences. You know what, Pastor? I have seen this, I have done that, you know, and, and nothing works. Brothers and sisters, we need God's help to overcome our unbelief, just like the apostle who cried out in Luke chapter 17, verse 5, Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. I want you to see from this perspective, it is not the faith that we have, but the God in whom we believe. Now, brothers and sisters, we must continue to put our faith in God in all of life's situation. And as we acknowledge uh, our unbelief, the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ Himself, He will pour out generously and supply us bountifully with His grace in every situation, maybe in our lives, in our families, in our studies, in our career, and even in our businesses. Psalms 46 verse 1 tells us, For God is our refuge, our strength, and in our time of need, my friends. On the other hand, we also must tap on heaven's resources and we must begin to practice fasting and praying so that by the grace of God, we can experience a breakthrough, we can experience a miracle in our life and in our situation. And allow me to speak prophetically to you right now, those who are listening to this devotion. I'm going to believe that some of you are going to experience a miracle and a breakthrough from God when you begin to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Father God, the author and perfecter of our faith, we come before you with humility and we ask for your grace to be upon us each day of our lives. Guide and watch over us as we interact with different people and deal with different situations in our lives. Lord Jesus, please strengthen us when we are weak and feel like giving up. Help us to overcome our unbelief and remove the roots of unbelief from our life. Deepen our understanding of who you are and help us to put our complete trust in you. And Lord, as we learn to fast and pray in this season of our life, I pray that you will allow us to experience a miracle and a breakthrough in our life. May you use the situation in our life to bring glory to your name. Bless your people, O Lord, and glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you once again for joining us. I believe that many of you have been blessed by the Word of God. And remember, God is a good and a faithful God. May the Lord bless you richly. We will see you again.